Although there's a gap between us, I managed to get the message to you to move, whether that was to catch the ball or more likely because I can't really throw to avoid being hit in the face, it doesn't matter. The fact is, this isn't unlike what happens when your nerves need to tell your muscles to move. You see, your nerve cells and your muscle cells don't actually touch. So how does the message get across? And why the little balls? Well, if we imagine our nerve cell is here, the edge of the cell, the cell membrane, is here. The rest of the cell engulfs the judges, heads out that way, connects to other nerve cells, and ultimately to the brain. Over here, we have our muscle cell. It heads out towards you guys and out the back of the stage. In the middle is this gap through which the message to move has to pass. So, in our nerve cell, a message comes down from the brain telling that muscle to move, and the nerve cell kicks into action. It starts making up specialized packets called vesicles, a box in our case, of a compound called acetylcholine a neurotransmitter. That's our little blue balls. Now, I won't do this to scale because for each message from the brain, a hundred of these vesicles are made, and each vesicle contains over 100,000 acetylcholine molecules. And frankly, they wouldn't let me on the plane from Aberdeen with that many balls. So we'll go for about five. Our message is ready to go. The problem is, our vesicle, our box, is made of the same stuff as our cell membrane. So it can't leave, but the acetylcholines have to. So what happens is the vesicle fuses and becomes part of the cell membrane. And in doing so, the acetylcholines are thrown into the gap. Now, this is why I always carry spare balls. Our acetylcholine is free to move across the gap, connect to the muscle cell, and tell it to move, like when I threw the balls to you. But what about when things go wrong? Well, say you have one too many wrinkles. You can paralyze your face to get rid of them. And you can do this using Botox. Back in our nerve cell, the message to pull a facial expression still gets to the end of the nerve cell. And the little packet of acetylcholines is still made. But when Botox is around, the vesicle can't fuse, the acetylcholines can't leave, and you remain expressionless. And apparently you look a little better. The venom of the black widow spider also causes paralysis. However, it does it by causing unreleased, uncontrolled, sorry, release of acetylcholine. This means it start, the prey starts to spasm, but eventually there's none left and the prey is paralyzed. Now you might think it's all just balls, but I think it's pretty interesting. <laughs> get the balls, you talk, you the questions. Thanks very much, Sonia. Hi. Why did you choose this subject for the talk? Is it, this is your, your PhD work? Um, isn't this isn't specifically my work. Our lab sort of split into two. So my work, as Quinton sort of said, is the, the sensory side of neuroscience. So our lab focuses on mechanosensation, so how the body or any organism detects stretch. But the other side of my lab looks at um, this neuromuscular junction, and particularly when things go wrong, how can you fix it? And looking at new ways to actually cause, so in certain diseases, the release of acetylcholine goes down. So the sort of other half of the lab looks at how you can increase the release of acetylcholine to keep movement happening. Sonia. You said when it goes wrong. Give me, give me some ideas of sort of the crazy, advanced, futuristic technologies that are going to stop it when it goes wrong. That's a tough one. The sexy side of it. Um, I'll give me some sexy sides. <laughs> Come I don't, on. I don't think um, I... Questions <laughs> may be a bit random. <laughs> um, I don't... I don't know if there is a sexy side to neuromuscular junctions, is oh, there? Come on. Oh, um, I don't believe it. <laughs> the, well, the stuff that we look at in our lab is looking at a molecule called TGF-beta. 
um, that nobody else has really looked at before. It shouldn't really have too much of an effect, but we seem to find it ups the quantal content. So that is how much balls are in the box so that they get thrown out, because in certain diseases, not enough balls go in the box, not enough balls get um, thrown out. And what across. kind of diseases are those? Give us an example um, of what you're ALS. trying to tackle. So what Stephen Hawking has, mm -hmm. um, and other neurodegenerative diseases like ALS, um, they're uh, affected. And how close way. are those to the clinic? Um, not very close, to be, to be honest. I love an honest answer. Yeah, <laughs> 10 to 15 years yeah. would be the stock answer. <laughs> but um, no, it, it's, it's, it's groundwork science, but it's all important. Have you, I, I loved your ball throwing, and I wondered if you'd done that with other audiences and which ones and how they've reacted, particularly perhaps younger children, I don't know. Um, I haven't done it with younger children, actually, but I think it would work really well, because you tend to get a good reaction just throwing balls at people. It gets people's attention. Um, I've also hot, I thought I hot somebody directly in the face once, who was quite close, but I didn't. can't be litigious. <laughs> And, 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 and uh, the, do people get it when you throw the ball? I mean, is it working for you? I think so. I think yeah. it gets quite a complex message across that you can... It's actually quite a simple idea. Also, it's quite complex molecules and complex systems of how, like, the vesicle um, fuses to the membrane. It's quite a complex uh, system where lots of proteins are involved. But I think you can break it down to it's very simple and also it helps you explain what, goes, what can go wrong in certain diseases. Okay, with the debut to make any Daegu proud, Sonia Watson.